Thank you, and uh, welcome to our talk on names and naming in uh, Gorwa and Iraq, a typological Tanzanian perspective. Uh, my name is Andrew Harvey, and I'm here with my colleague, Christina Alphonse, and uh, we're going to talk uh, about uh, providing uh, some insight into names and naming in two closely related Cushitic languages of Tanzania, uh, as well as compare and contrast the patterns uh, with a handful of other Tanzanian languages. Before we begin, however, I'd like to let our audience know that this talk will be made openly accessible both through the DOI given by Zenodo here, as well as the YouTube channel whose link is also given on this slide. This project is very much ongoing, uh, so we welcome your continued engagement, especially on directions in which we could go and the trends or details which we may not have um, seen. The South Cushitic languages Gorwa and Iraq are both spoken in Tanzania by approximately 130,000 and 500,000 people respectively. Both are represented here on the map of Tanzania by two yellow circles indicating uh, roughly where they are spoken. Uh, they're among the small number of Cushitic languages uh, spoken in the country. All the others can be found on the genetic tree provided in the upper right-hand corner. And they set themselves apart by their phonology, grammar, as well as the wider cultures of their speaker communities. The photo given here is of Ako, or grandfather Lagwen Goti, at Dogwandu, a special site known for being the past home of a powerful doctor. So I'm a Canadian linguist who works in Tanzania, and therefore I necessarily bring an outsider perspective to my work. Crispina, on the other hand, uh, is an Iraq linguist born into the Iraq language community and approaches the study from an insider perspective. We have both asserted in earlier independent works that Gorwa and Iraq naming traditions are important conduits of local history and that simultaneously they are under considerable pressure from Christian, Muslim, and Swahili naming conventions. Uh, and while both of our previous works attempt an internal typology of Gorwa and Iraq names and naming, no attempt has been made to place them within the larger context of Tanzanian names and naming systems. This talk will begin with a detailed discussion of names and naming in Gorwa and Iraq, distinguishing several in independent mechanisms within the larger whole, including name inheritance, circumstantial naming, and talismanic naming. Then, drawing on a wealth of newly available analyses of names and naming in other Tanzanian languages, the Gorwa and Iraq systems will be compared and contrasted with those present in Bantu, Hadza, and Nilotic-speaking communities. And the photo we're looking at here is of Martini Andrea, Will Brody Augustina, and Leonardi uh, Muhindi uh, from left to right, adorned in the style of Gorwa Waruse initiates. Um, so first of all, however, uh, we must address the question of why a Tanzanian typology is necessary. Uh, the answer to this can be seen somewhat on this map. Uh, this is a language map of Tanzania, where each numbered shape designates a language community. In fact, Tanzania is one of the most linguistically diverse countries on Earth, with over 120 languages spoken within a territory a bit bigger than France. This diversity forces us to ask ourselves, is this reflected in how people create and give names? Now, in a slightly different language map of the African continent, we can see that a Tanzanian typology is also interesting. Not only is Tanzania, highlighted here in red, linguistically diverse, but it is the only country in which languages from all four major African language phyla are spoken. So we have uh, Cushitic languages like Gorwa and Iraq from the Afro-Asiatic phylum, we have Nilotic languages like Maasai of the Nilo-Saharan phylum, Bantu languages like Nyamwezi of the Niger-Congo phylum, and more controversially, the purported Khoisan language Sandawe and the language isolate Hadza. This really presents to us a rich patchwork, each language a result of centuries and in some cases nearly millennia of interaction and language contact. Um, the area of study is a wonderful place to look at language, linguistic genres, and linguistic arts like names and naming. 
For this talk, we will look at Gorwan Iraq, the Cushitic languages designated on the maps on the map by the circles. Uh, Iraq is the more northerly, and Gorwa is the more southerly. We'll also be looking at the Nilotic language Maasai, here represented by the square. Uh, the language isolate Hadza, here uh, represented by a hexagon, and nine Bantu languages, Haya, Jita, Zanzibar Swahili, Nyamwezi, Kagulu, Ndali, Pogolo, Safwa, and Nyakusa, here represented by triangles. But first, let's take a closer look at Gorwa and Iraq, for which I'll give Crispina the floor. It is important first of all to note that traditionally the Gorwa and the Iraq people practice patriarchality, that is, following marriage, the woman will live with her husband, typically at or around the household of his father. When a woman gives birth, therefore she is almost always at the house of her nurse. Returning to, the, to her biological parents will be very unusual. So, present at the birth are typically her mother in law, Kumbo, as well as any experienced old man or midwife, Sinaba. In this video, Umari Heke and the boy Annie are describing how babies are delivered in the community. A child may be named anywhere from the day of its birth up to around three months afterwards. Ultimately, the responsibility of naming a child rests with the father's family members. Though, if a child receives a name and is subsequently sick, cries more than normal, or behaves badly, maybe he need a consultation with a traditional doctor or Sharma, such as Ibrahim Lowe, pictured here with a cloud filled with divine stones. Beyond family discussions or seeking special resources to the traditional doctor, there are no other major issues involved in deciding a child's name. A celebration involving announcing the child's name to the wider community is, however, observed among the Gorua people and the Iraq people. For the Gorua people, a child is birthed in water which has been built with the bark of the rubber trees, and then a stone is wrapped around the baby's arm waist. For the Iraq people, children are invited from the neighborhood to welcome and celebrate the new born baby. And this, the name is formally decided and told to the larger community. This is an image of Goro musician Teresia Funa, who is sitting in the Monica Lisha playing music under a rubber tree in the same room. In naming a child, there are several sources of names which may be used. Perhaps the most common is inherited family names. These names will be those of relatives, most of them on the father's side of the family. For both Gorua and the Iraq, the original owner of the inherited name must already be deceased. To give a child the name of a living relative would be similar to stating that he wished that relative dead. This family, if there are ways to commemorate and keep alive a person who has dead, an effort to use group for symbolic reincarnation, a sign of love and seeking blessing and protection from ancestors, as well as a way of keeping a recording and restoring the clan names. This is an image of a boy, one of whose name is Kanjolo, inherited from a relative of his grandparents' age. In fact, he didn't know that this was one of his name until the day his photo was taken. Another common source of names is the circumstances that immediately surrounding the birth of the child. This may be the sighting of a notable animal, a child may be named Dira lion if a child is seen, if a lion is seen or heard. Weather or seasons, a child may be called the Kua. Rain in this green season, or called if born during the cold or dry season. 
on this event it may be named or hung upon the time of famine or shower war upon during a time of conflict. Another common topic for circumstantial is beer and beer beer, which is what is depicted in this video. Many children are named after the stages at which the neighborhood beer is at, and many children are simply named for beer. A limited sources of name are used to explicitly protect the children from death. A child may be born following a series of miscarriages or any deaths of previous siblings. In this case, the child may be given one of a handful of names like Ibuai, Death, Heha, Mitung, Waha, Alcoholism, or in Iraq, how a poetic word for Haina, the surrogate of the spirits. These various sources of name come stuck on top, one top of the other, and it therefore make it difficult to determine how somebody got their name. For example, a person named Haima Jani may have received the, their name circumstantially, that is maybe their mother gave birth while traveling to the hospital, or they may have inherited, that is maybe they themselves they are not born during a journey, but their grandfather was. In the video of Lin, Raheli Lawe'i explains that most of her children both inherited the name and were given circumstantial. They all also had Christian name based on their birth. With this in mind, let's return to attempting a typology. Uh, bringing our other languages back into the picture, aside from our first-hand research in Gorba and Iraq, the rest of the information comes from secondary sources, a couple of published books and articles, but mainly a collection of master's dissertations written by students at the University of Dodoma and the University of Dar es Salaam, each of which has a relatively similar structure, but which each focuses on different aspects of names and naming in a subject language. The parameters of variation which emerged were the following. Here we have some parameters mainly associated with how the name is given as well as its grammar. Uh, and here we have some parameters dealing with the mechanisms by which names are chosen. Because of time restrictions, we won't attempt to speak to all of these, but we have chosen a subset to examine more closely. The first parameter, and maybe the messiest in terms of possible responses, is who gives the name. Here we can see a range of values, uh, color-coded for roughly how much say women have, very red if they have a lot, versus how much say men have, very blue if they have a lot. Returning to our map, we can see that Gorban Iraq defer to men, particularly men of the Patra clan. We can see that this occurs in several other systems in Tanzania, though for Maasai, Haya, and Ndali, uh, we don't know. Kaguru is a standout in that uh, it is primarily women who decide the name, specifically women of the Matra clan. This is most likely due to the fact that Kaguru are matrilineal, that is, uh, they trace their ancestry through their mothers. Hadza is described as being neither strongly patrilineal nor strongly matrilineal. One reflection of this is in naming, where both parents decide the name of the child. Both parents also decide in Ndali, but we don't have enough data to infer why this is the case. The second parameter I'd like to examine is whether a name can be a verb phrase. Uh, both Gorwa and Iraq answer no to this question, though it is not because these languages do not employ names with a verbal origin. In fact, many circumstantial names in both of these languages are deverbal in nature. Deverbal being a key designation here. So take the name Taha, a circumstantial name given to a child if they are born during a fight, for example. The associated verb is Tah, to hit, with a nominalizing ending. A translation would be hitting. The name is not a verb, however, but a deverbal noun. 
Compare this to Nyakusa, one of the Bantu languages which feature verb phrase nouns. Here we can see an example like andengenie. Uh, the tone wasn't indicated, so I'm most likely mispronouncing this. Morphologically, we see that this form behaves exactly like a verb, complete with subject marking, object marking, and perfect aspect marking. He, she has soothed me. Most of the Bantu languages in our sample uh, can do this, uh, with the exception of Jita and Yamwezi, highlighted here. Um, Zanzibar Swahili and um, Pogolo may also use verb phrase names, but they are much more marginable, marginal in their respective systems. Pre-birth circumstantial naming is what we've used to describe names which are circumstantial, but which specifically refer to the pregnancy or to the birth of the name holder. As you can see from our second table, a language can make use of circumstantial naming, but not refer to the pregnancy or birth. This is the pattern we see for Gorwa and Iraq, with circumstantial naming a primary strategy but few names referring to the actual pregnancy or birth. Geographically, the pattern looks like this. Uh, in Maasai, pre-birth circumstantial naming is the primary strategy. Uh, the two lake zone languages, Haya and Jita, make limited use of this strategy, and once again, Zanzibar Swahili and Pogolo pattern together in not using this strategy primarily in their system. Castigatory names are not present in Gorwa or Iraq, but are salient enough to merit mention among this audience. Uh, these are names which uh, Schunenberger refers to as sharp as arrows, and they're used among the Nyamwezi, and are given by a mother to her child in order to indirectly censure her husband or her husband's family. Uh, these, again, do not occur in Gorwa or Iraq, but are reasonably frequent, uh, seemingly in the western part of our sample. Using Nyamwezi as an example, uh, we see some uh, examples of children called Vagaile, they hate, Nhagila, I am neglected, or Nyamangula, she who is scoffed at. Um, and again, I'm most likely mispronouncing these due to a lack of tone marking in the original. Uh, these names, of course, do not mean that the child is hated or neglected, but instead they uh, are a complaint from the mother making her plight explicit among her in-laws. Finally, we would like to address a pattern which clearly distinguishes Gorwa and Iraq from the other languages of our sample, that is, the use of gendered names. Where in Gorwa and Iraq, the vast majority of names are unisex, in almost every other language except for Pogolo, which does have some unisex names, uh, every language has a set of names uh, given to boys and a set of names given to girls. In this sense, Iraq and uh, Gorwa are unique in the country. Uh, zooming into this further, we have a handful of circumstantial names here, all of which can be given without further modification to a boy or a girl. So the name Amsi, for example, given to a child born at night, can be given equally to a, a girl child or a boy, boy child with no further modification. The same thing with Dafi, for example, the name given to a child born during the time of the day in which the cows are brought back home. Uh, again, that name can go to a boy and a girl, etc. Um, and we can also see that even circumstantial names clearly associated with an entity of a certain sex, such as Tiai, which literally means women, or gendered activities such as Migir, firewood, or the collection of firewood, which is primarily uh, done by women, uh, they can be given to both boys and girls. In terms of final thoughts, this talk should be seen as the beginning and not as the end of analysis. In some ways, Goro and Ilo names and naming are very typical of this sample. In other ways, Goro and Ilo are very different. They specific, the very specific suggestions include one, a comprehensive review of all of the names provided in each of these where instead of providing evaluation as yes, no, and in between, evaluating the percentage of names in languages which conform or do not conform to a certain parameter would allow for the kind of scalar measurement which may be useful to see gradient changes. 
Second, a return to the research methodology. Because many of these works were master's dissertation, the data collection method was necessarily simplistic rather than concluding questionnaires with community elders, which often result in a picture of the phenomenon as an idealized version of the same, how things should be instead of necessarily how things are. A less directive form of collection, such as interview about how they were named or how they themselves named their children, would be beneficial. Lastly, encouraging further research, especially to further field the work. There are over 100 languages spoken in Tanzania, and these represent only the tip of the iceberg in terms of person representation, generalization, and observation of. Import will only came with a much larger sample size.